So we're starting this video off and it's gonna be a little bit of a different one. We're starting the usual thank you to all my subscribers and even if you aren't a subscriber, thank you for taking a minute to watch these videos. Uh, I did all this last night though, so it's a little bit different than the usual. We're, we're gonna be going through it together. Uh, messing around with the car, the usual, the tetanus shot dart. This is the brake pedal, the clutch pedal assembly, all that to there. I'm gonna throw a cell phone clip in and basically what was going on as I'm going through and showing you this is I was trying to get the car ready for its first start before we put in the fuel system, before we get the engine back to a ready spot. You notice I had some brake fluid out, I was messing with the brakes, bleeding the brakes to make sure everything was fine and I ran into a little bit of a problem. Uh, you notice in that clip the pedal was very sticky. At first I believed it to be the master cylinder. It's a brand new master cylinder though so it's a little bit weird. Ended up taking the push rod loose from the pedal and you see in the video, the pedal was just very sticky. Very, I don't know, t it didn't have any tension on it really. It just was gummed up. And this is actually what I ended up finding. So you have your traditional A body Mopar, um, brake pedal, clutch pedal, bracket. This is the under dash assembly that bolts to and through the firewall that your master cylinder actually attaches to. Brake pedal, clutch pedal. So your clutch pedal has a stud that comes through and it runs through this hole right here, passes through this bracket, and that's actually what holds the brake pedal up. So the clutch pedal is actually doing all the support. There is, however, another piece. This little cylinder here goes inside of there, but it does so, oops, other side, by going through here first. And if you notice, Actually, is it this side? Oh, it is this side. So you notice it goes through very loose and then suddenly gets firm and I can't wiggle it anymore. That is due to all this rust and buildup and junk on this side. The bushings still are good and are letting everything float. I'm actually missing two of the bushings for the clutch pedal, so I'm gonna try and see if I can find some replacements at, I don't know, like a cheap substitute, Napa or something like that. Um, I believe they sell some O'Reilly's Napa, whatever, some universal, one of those little grommet bushing whatevers. But after disassembling everything, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean it all up, get it ready just so we can put it all back together and hopefully get a free swinging brake pedal. So the usual YouTube magic. And boom, like that, like I said, power of YouTube magic. Quick, nice and clean. Things that go through this way. And yeah. Nice and free now. Actually, if I put it in where it's supposed to, like this, I can like spin it. And you can hear it rotates by itself. So that's nice and free. Uh, this little body style clip with the bolt holds it in place. So what this little groove is for here. And the hole on that side is for. Basically now I can clean up more of this. I have the brake pedal downstairs drying because I decided to paint it real fast. Probably clean up a couple more of these odds and ends, reassemble everything, and then I can go as far as putting it all back together. Putting it into the car, and then I'll have brakes. And we can continue with what the actual part of this video is about today, so let's do all that. Getting the brakes put back together while I'm out here messing with the wiring. I'm gonna get to show you guys before we put the steering column back in. You're not gonna be able to see any of this because it's gonna be... A few moments later. So after yelling at the dogs, now the neighbors show up, so, but quickie. Little thing, press brakes, yes, they spring back, everything works. They reset the brake light switch how they're supposed to. Everything is nice and lubed up and perfect again, so let's do a steering column. Maybe, kinda, I don't know, figure it out.
2,000 years later. Let's see this hole. Yeah. Like where my finger goes yeah. in. That's what she said. <laughs> I'm trying to line it up on that step. Okay. So you're going to come here. Okay. And you're not going to really do the lining. I'm going to do the lining. Okay. All you basically need to do is pull this back a little bit like that. Okay. And then just kind of hold it up. Go forward or backwards, whatever you want me to do. Yeah, I was gonna say I can do all. Duke, no, get, do not go bark. To the left, too. Perfect. Because the wheels are slightly to the left. We should be able to let go of now. Ta da! Good no. rest. Anything for you. See, I knew I wasn't going to be able to do that myself. Love you. I love you. Thank you. Attack the demon boy? So after redoing a bunch of wiring last night, uh, ended up doing door locks and a new trunk latch lock. Trunk latch lock, a trunk lock itself. Uh, don't know if I already said this, that was a fiasco and a half, but um, then ended up hacking my hand open. Let's see if it's gonna focus with my face out of the way. Cause it, it's just gonna pick up on my beard. No, yes, there we go. So uh, yeah, I had to glue Basically, the side of my thumb back down, which is fantastic. Loved it. Amazing. Amazing. Kept working. Every time I tried to fix a wire, I'd find another wire that I had to mess with. Uh, I didn't end up looming anything like I had planned to. We have a couple boxes of loom. We got some defrost stuff. We have a bunch of things. We have a bunch of things to do, but these are going to be for a different video because right now we're just going to be focusing on wiring. This ended up being so much more than I expected. Uh, I'm going to put up a real fast diagram it's, yeah picture it's a picture of a diagram um, from Mads engineering or Mads electrical of a, of a basic Mopar ammeter delete and with that you'll notice redid the charging wire redid a bunch of this new power cable for the battery side new stuff going from all of that nothing's loomed like I said new starter relay everything I have a new battery tray obviously can't put that in yet because like I said we want to loom this and then the battery tray with the light there's a hole right there so I'm just you could tell I'm I'm not into it today my hand hurts so bad still every time I squeeze it blood comes out it's just <laughs> the door locks and the trunk lock though do look amazing nice new chrome new keys I can't complain there but now that you, after the wife helped with some B-roll, get the steering column in and messing with the wiring, the only thing I have left to do is put a battery in and fire test and possibly see if it will start. There's a leaf in there. But, and just, I'm not expecting great things. Now after messing with so many things and trying to go through and just from the new starter relay trace everything back, 
new wires where there needed to be new wires, redone a bunch of solder points. The typical Mopar fuse, what is this, the, can't even think right now, the bulkhead connector, it's all melted. So there's a bunch of pass-through wires now. I still have two solder joints to redo, but those, they're gonna hold for now. So I'm thinking, you guys, tripod, battery, attempt to see if this thing will start because I need some sort of victory. I need something. I've been cleaning in here, trying to get stuff ready for another video. Oh, please, please work. So tripod, get you guys set up and uh, yeah. Continue complaining about how my hand just is aching. And Note to self, if you're doing a 72 dart trunk lock, make sure to go from the side carefully with like a long screwdriver. Don't stick your fingers in there and just try and shove it because yeah, it'll get you way too large of a battery. That's tight, that's tight. Hold it on there, good. I mean, it's the worst that can happen. I'm going to the fire. Okay. Definitely need a smaller battery. Definitely need a smaller battery. Uh, I need to redo the negative still. That's no biggie. I can redo the negative. Never been this nervous to do anything in my life. That's doing anything at all. Oh, I have headlights, marker lights. That should be working. Starter seemed like it worked, but my battery is going to, of course, be low. I need jumper cables. Do I have jumper cables? Oh. Alright, so after some messing around off camera, I've noticed the dome light works. And smart me, I broke the cover taking this one off. I actually bought a new one. So that that's going to be awesome. Uh, we're in neutral here, right? Yeah, we're in neutral here. So, nifty trick. It does actually. This doesn't start. So, no ignition. Cur yeah, no ignition. No 12 volts to the ballast resistor currently. I'm going to run this downstairs and then I'm going to do some Googling. So, part of what I did in the rewiring has fixed this portion, I believe. I have headlights, like I said, which. Makes me believe I should have taillights if I clean the ground and hook the ground back up back there. Which we have running lights, all that stuff. I didn't check turn signals or anything like that, but I wonder. I hear the relay, so I believe we have turn signals. <laughs> I love this car. Uh, but yeah, so now I need to do some Googling because I'm not familiar with Mopar wiring, like I said. But it's somewhere under here. Something is not just getting the power it's supposed to. Guaranteed it's in the bulkhead wiring because last night I was doing everything in the dark and 
there's still a couple wires that I don't know what they do. So you gotta figure out what those are going to, what they're supposed to go to. And I wanna, you notice there's no door panels. I wanna vacuum the inside of the doors out. I got the door panels off because I'm gonna try and recondition them slightly instead of buying new ones in that case. But uh, it's just a ramble fun. I got a million things going on this car, a million different projects. But we're close. We're real close. So let's get to it. Hey. After some Googling, I think I found it. After some Googling, shit don't fit. Okay, let's not touch anything. It's temporary. I'm guessing that means that corner wire is also in need of power. Which, like I said, will be for a different time. Still a new. Oh, I need to connect that in. Alright, so what I'm doing here before even bothering, just cranking it because I don't want to flood this thing. I'm just going to turn the ignition on and check the ballast resistor for power. Should be like that. It should have fuel. What am I doing? Oh, I'm nervous. Oh, I hate this part. God damn it. did try to fire. Oh, I'm so happy. That starter sounds great. Hmm. Once I know what's gonna work and what's gonna not. Maybe. Maybe kinda. Note to self, when you've had a really long day, you cut yourself, you just things are not going the way you want them to, double check the things you're doing, just for your own personal sanity. It wants to die, it sounds like, but it's also cold as hell and the choke's barely on. It's running though, that's all that matters to me. This stage connector had been loosened up to fit a wire to, uh, I'm not even filming myself, but it was loosened up to fit a wire to run to the battery, right? I didn't realize cranking, it was making it fall off every time, so that's why it would start, and it was because it would make con- yeah. I'm just rambling, but it runs off the key now. I can go through and loom all this stuff up. The big thing is, what I want to find out... Ah! Matt, I'm trying to pull the battery cables off. And hey, we're charging, and I bet you if I rev it up, it gets a little better. This thing does have an ever so slight bit of blow by. You can't even really see it on camera here. I'm gonna. Oh yeah. I'm so scared of this flex light.
Oh, 14 2 when you rev it up a bit? Don't die. Okay, well, we proved our point. It runs off the key. I'm so excited. It charged. It got a little bit of an oil leak, it seems like, and I need. Ah, there's so many little things I want to. Yeah, a million things I want to redo, but we can officially almost take it for a test drive. I'm so excited. I left the ignition on, so I need to swap that real fast, but there's a million little things I still want to do. I need to put the seats in. I need to fix the hood latch that broke. There's, I need to clean the windows because all of the windows inside and out are bad. The windshield does have some haze to it, but I'm not, I'm not necessarily in the biggest care for that. I mean, it's drivable. Lots of cleanup, lots of odds and ends. I wanna drain all the oil out and change the oil. I do have a filter and got some oil and some Lucas waiting in there. Like I said a million times already, we have a bunch of odds and ends. We have a new battery tray. We actually have some fancy goodies, but those are gonna be for a different video the next video, which will be test driving it. I know you're thinking, it runs, why aren't we throwing the wheels on and test driving it right now? Because tomorrow, I, there's some things that we show up, we show up, we get that show up, that we can enjoy together, you, me, the subscribers, the Joe, and the Dart. I mean, it's so close, but, oh, <laughs> I'm having one of those days still, and like I said, I want to throw in a bunch of the stuff I've cleaned up, I want to go through and loom all the wiring. I got some of that nice split, split braided stuff. <sighs> English. And I have some heater defrosts and some other goodies that, yeah, they're generic, but they'll help the car. They'll help the look. They'll help the feel. They'll help the drive. And that's what that thing is about. The feels and the drive. But with that, I'm actually going to let you guys go, and I hope you enjoy your week. Have a wonderful one. It's like Sunday or something like that. I don't even know anymore at this point, but... I'll see you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe, T stay tuned for more, but I'm out of here. I gotta edit this and then get ready for the next one. But Average Joe Builds, I'll check you guys in the next one.